Oh, forsjomt. So we're back at the banks. Today you've joined me on the canals and we are doing a spot of drop shotting for perch. Now it's a place I've been wanting to come for probably a couple of weeks now. I've been stuck inside, I'm working on my next book, Obsession with Pike. And I thought, you know what, I just want a day's fishing. Weather looks absolutely glorious. Clear skies, fairly bright day. It's about five degrees at the moment and I've literally just turned up. It's about seven o'clock. And the plan of attack today is, yeah, like I say, drop shotting for perch. I'm gonna start off with really simple tactics, just fishing worms, move over to soft plastics later. I've got some nice shads. And then I might end the day off with a bit of lure fishing around this section of canal, but it is quite long. You know, there's quite a bit of ground we're gonna be covering today. So I'm literally now, you know, I've just turned up, I've got everything ready, and it's just now a case of baiting this hook up and try and catch some of these perch in this canal. So without further ado, I'm gonna get this all set up and sorted, and then we'll basically go from there. So first cast of the day, let's see what we can catch. There's quite a lot of debris and dead weed in this canal, so I've got good distance from the weight to the actual hook. As you can imagine, it's very silty on here as well. I don't know if this section's got lots of perching or not, to be honest. But like most canals, I mean, they're gonna be, you're gonna have all sorts in here. There's gonna be a lot of snags as well, so I'm guessing I'm gonna lose a bit of tackle, but let's have a little walk along here, and see what we've got. I mean, as you can see, there's a lot of rushes. There's gonna be a lot of dead weed around here as well, so. Water's fairly clear. I mean, there's a little bit of color to it, but it doesn't look that bad to be honest for a bite, it really doesn't. I, mean, I don't know if there's huge amounts of pike in here, lots of perch, but it's definitely worth a go, without a doubt. And we have had lots of rain over the best part of two or three days, something like that, so that's what's gonna give it a bit more color than normal, but to be honest, there's so much water to go at, that's probably the most exciting part of this. Just keep looking around, see if there's anything. And there's quite a few sections that we're gonna be fishing today, so we've got plenty of water to cover. But yeah, it's a beautiful morning, absolutely glorious. I think it's gonna be a fairly mild day as well, probably about 12 degrees. Well, it seems fairly quiet at the moment. And this is one of the things you come up against when you drop shotting on canals, it's trying to cover as much ground as you can and falling on fish. And this is what I do like to do every now and again, come out. Oh, fish on, fish on. What have we got, what have we got? Oh no, don't tell me it's a pike. Yeah, it's a pike. Let's see if we can get him in without having to Stay there, mate. Only a little bubba. Let's have a look, shall we? As you can see, only a little small one. <laughs> That's the one, mate. You're always going to get a few small fish in here, but I was expecting the odd pike coming through here. I mean, you are going to get little resident ones. You do get the odd big pike as well, knocking around, but generally speaking, you are going to get the odd tiddler coming through. So, I mean, we've done this section here in probably 10 minutes, and the wind is picking up a little bit now. So, I think we'll move up past the lock and we'll give that a go and see if we can get anything there. When I'm targeting big pike, it's normally the bait and weight approach. 
that normally does the business for me but this kind of fishing is just absolutely brilliant because you can just cover so much ground in such a short space of time and as you can see if the camera will pick that up I think that might be a dead carp possibly looks like a dead fish just here in this marginal line I think it's a, a carp maybe Oh, fish on. Here we go. What have we got here? Oh, look there, it's another pond. <laughs> oh, this is, the, this is the only thing you're up against. I've got a bit of a tangle in the line as well. Oh, no, that's going to come off now. This is not what you need, bird's nest. I literally spoiled this reel up last night, so I'm guessing this is going to come off, but... No, he's still on. <laughs> yeah you can always expect this whenever you perch fishing especially with worms come on little fella no need for a net oh. now you can imagine if I was using fluorescent lures I think we'd probably be catching these left right and centre so that's one of the reasons why I'm going to leave it till last off the last thing we want is to be catching lots of pike we've had a fair share this winter all right beautiful little beautiful little part though <laughs> well that's two little small ones we've had just need to try and get amongst some of these perch and to be honest I don't really know the stock of these canals but you can have perch in every, every section of the canal, it's just getting amongst them. And once you find one, normally you'll get amongst quite a few of them, so... Right, let's move further down. Well, so far we've covered probably, I'd say, probably half a mile. We've gone up a lock, and yeah, it's a beautiful day, absolutely glorious. Fairly cold, but I think it's going to warm up a little bit later. Not, you know, the sun's out at the moment, so it's absolutely beautiful and it's it's a beautiful section of the canal this is it's my first time fishing here and so far so good we've had a couple of fish we've had a couple of small little small jacks and i was expecting that that's the reason why i'm not fishing fluorescent baits at the moment you know i'm just fishing the worm i think in probably an hour or so i'll move over to the, the small shads and we'll give them a go and we've got you know we've got quite a bit of ground to cover today so so far so good, a couple of small jacks. It would have been nice to get a few perch on that section at the bottom, but it seems that, you know, there is certain sections where you won't be catching them. There's not that many of them, but I'm hoping as we move further up, we might be able to get amongst some perch. So we are probably gonna get a few small jacks as well. I'm expecting that on any canal, but at the moment I'm getting a bend in the rod. That's the main thing, especially with it being my first time here. So what I'm gonna do now, we'll move further up here and we'll give that a bash. I'm gonna stick with the worm. Like I say, a couple of hours time, we'll move over to the shads and then I'll just show you the bits and bobs that I'm using and then we'll go from there. Well, before we go over the bridge, I'm gonna have a little cast around here. Let's see if we can get any action here. Cause it's a nice little bit of water that leads up to the actual bridge so see if there's anything knocking around in here oh fish on <laughs> this is what i was expecting to see tiny tiny little little perch and this is the kind of thing you can expect to catch drop shotting on the canals beautiful little fish though as you can see Beautiful little colours on these fish, absolutely lovely, stunning. Just need to catch its mum there. Yeah. Oh, fish on. What have we got here? Another small one? Yep, that's to be expected. I'm guessing there's a few in this section. Another lovely looking, nice little perch. Like I say, the markings on these are absolutely bang on. It's a beautiful bit of sport, it really is. Just simple worm fishing. Right, mate, back you go. 
question is, is there any bigger ones? It seems this section here, there's a shoal of them knocking around. I'll probably have another five minutes here and then we'll move up the bridge. So we've done probably two miles of walking. We've roamed a couple of sections of the canal. I'm gonna probably go for one more section, which is past this bridge. This is a beautiful area. We've had probably three small pike, a few small perch, and this section seems, I don't think there's huge amounts of fish in this one, but I'm hoping that the next one we can get some joy. And then what I'll do later on, on the way back, I might float a bit of bread maybe if I see any carp moving, have a go on there. But generally speaking, I'm gonna stick with the, the actual drop shot with the worms. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna pass this bridge. We'll have a look at the other section of the canal and then basically go from there. All right, so we're on the new section of canal. Let's give this one a bash. We're trying near the lock gates. See if there's anything hanging around here. And we'll go from there. This, I think this is a bit more public compared to further down. That was a bit more rural. And what we'll do, we'll probably have an hour on here, then slowly make our way back and see if we can see anything. But this section looks absolutely beautiful. It really does. Beautiful reed lines. Look at that, springs in the air. The sun is shining. And you've got quite a few reed lines on this right hand side, so it wouldn't surprise me if we saw a few carp in those as well along this section. It's quite narrow here by the look of it. So we'll give this a bash for 10 minutes, see what's around here. But if you get a big perch coming to swim, it will absolutely annihilate that worm. So. I, mean, I don't know how big the perch go to in this, these sort of sections of the canal. And I don't know many people that fish along here. I mean, I haven't seen one angler. So. It's new territory for me. And to be honest, I'm here for a bend in the rod as well. It's not just a case of I've got to catch big perch or. It's more a case of just getting out. But this is my this is my style of fishing. Hardly any anglers, just me against the fish. Catch or blank. Such a great bit of sport it really is. So we've got another set of lock gates here. And now we're coming to I actually thought this <laughs> there's like little mini sections with different lock gates, so we're coming up to another one further up. So I'm gonna have a quick quick go here and then we'll move up to there. So we're coming up to about 12 o'clock. We've got probably, I'd say probably an hour left and then we'll call it a day. We've had some nice little jacks, we've had a couple of perch. It's been nice to get on this section and having a good look around. And I will be coming back at some point later on in the week. So I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm running out of battery life as well. I didn't realize the amount of batteries that you need for filming when you're on the go. I've gone through about five GoPro batteries at the moment. So I'm gonna try and film as much as I can for the next sort of hour to two hours. But I'm gonna try further down this section now. We'll give it a bash and then we'll go from there. And then on the way back, if I see any carp, I might do a little change, put a bit of bread on, try and catch a few there. But generally speaking, I'm gonna stick with the drop shot on the worms and we'll try and comb probably half a mile, something like that.
we'll try this last bit of the section past the bridge i didn't fish there this morning this is actually where we started from this morning and we'll try we'll have probably 10 15 minutes fishing here and then we'll call it a day always a good holding place these bridges especially for shoals of perch that's it that's if there's many in here end of the session it's been a fairly productive day we had a few fish got a bend in the rod and that is one of the main reasons why i actually came down here just to get out the house and it's now time to get back do some more writing and then i think the next session we do might be for zander there's a lake that i've had my eye on and there's a few zander there's some perch there is the odd pike in there but generally speaking it's going to be a session for zander i've got some catfish videos coming out soon without further ado i'm going to get back get some editing get some more writing done the pipe book should be ready i'm hoping for october so i'm trying my best to get it finished as quickly as possible we had a good session over winter with some nice pike and it's just extended the book now so it's going to probably take me about two months to finish it off but for now i want to thank everyone for watching and i will see you guys in the next video